Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Hagen. Welcome to the third video in a series on universal design in cartography by the Nature Conservancy's Land Fire Team. If you missed the first video in this series, I recommend that you watch that using either the link on your screen or in the description below, as this video will be building on some concepts that we discussed in that original video, giving an overview of universal design in cartography. In this video, we will specifically be discussing font and typography and how you can use it on your maps to make them more readable and more usable. Let's get started. Readability is the ease with which a user can not only read the text, but also understand it. If your font is not readable, users cannot understand things like map legends, labels, titles, and any descriptive text that might go with your map. Remember that good font readability benefits not only users with low vision, but also those with dyslexia, as well as those using lower resolution screens, smaller screens, or accessing your content in bright sunlight or in situations where screens are not necessarily steady or stable. Here are a few font readability tips to consider. Use an appropriate font size for what you're designing. Remember that your font needs to be visible at whatever scale your map is using. Here we are in ArcGIS Pro. The most important thing to remember before you begin is that you need to know the scale of your finished map layout. If you set label properties such as size and then change the scale of your map, your labels may end up too big or too small in your finished layout. It's good practice to set your map scale in the layout and then change the scale in the map tab to match the layout before adding labels. Here we can see the map scale at the bottom. It's set to what is sort of an arbitrarily weird number, but that's because it's the one that looked the best in my final layout. We can take a look at what these labels look like when the layout is set to one to five million. And you can see that the road labels now become very small and the font is very large compared to what it looks like in this map. We also have a one to two million scale, which is almost the same but still the road labels are a little bit big and the font labels look weird and it just doesn't look the same as we want it to in our final layout. In cartography, legend fonts should not be set smaller than 12 point and should be closer to 14 points as legend complexity increases. To further increase readability, we can add visual hierarchy between headers and class descriptions to better communicate information. Remember, the smaller your font size, the larger you should set the spacing between both letters and rows, as this will increase font readability at smaller scales. There aren't really any convenient tools to check font size legibility, so I recommend looking at your map labels, legends, and other text on a variety of screens at a variety of sizes to determine the ease of reading that text. One easy way to do this is with something called the scale test. In the scale test, you simply bring up your design on your screen and try to get it as close to the actual size as possible. Then move as far away from the screen as you can and see if it's still readable. You can also do this with print maps by printing the map at whatever size and scale it was designed, taping it up somewhere, and then physically moving away from it to see at what point it becomes unreadable. Use simple, familiar, and easily parsed fonts. Avoid complex fonts such as handwriting fonts or fonts with additional strokes that are unnecessary to the main letter form. Avoid character ambiguity. When characters within a typeface appear similar to one another, this can introduce ambiguity which must be processed by the brain, thus impacting reading speed and understanding. A side note on this. I don't recommend using condensed fonts in maps. These may fit better in a space, especially when it comes to labels, but they're difficult for many people to read. Because they're condensed, the letter forms are changed, and there's not enough spacing which can introduce ambiguity and cause difficulty for people with low vision or dyslexia, or anybody who just has a hard time distinguishing one letter from another. It's also important that your font colors are easily distinguished from your background colors. In cartography, this is most commonly applied to font labels, especially over categorical maps. But I encourage you to check the contrast between font and background in all areas of your maps. 
One good tool for this is the Web Aim Color Contrast Checker. This tool allows you to input hexadecimal codes for your background color and your font color, and then provides a contrast ratio score. From here, you can use the sliders to adjust the background color or the font color to explore how the contrast ratio changes and apply a more readable contrast ratio to your maps. Universal design and website accessibility guidelines require a contrast ratio of at least 4.5 to 1 for normal text and 3 to 1 for large text, with a recommended contrast ratio of at least 7 to 1 for normal text and 4.5 to 1 for large text. Let's take a look at this in ArcGIS Pro. Here's a basic state map I've made that I used as a locator in another map. These labels are pretty good. As you can see, we have the cities labeled, and we've put a halo behind them to make them readable and distinguishable from the background. We also have visual hierarchy in that the New York State label is larger than the city labels, and the Albany label, which is the capital city and also the focus of that map, is larger than the other cities in New York. There are still a few things we can fix though, and we really need to check the readability of these labels. We're going to start with this New York State label, as I don't think it stands out very much from the background. I don't want to make it black necessarily because I don't want to draw the focus of the map to the New York State label and away from the Albany label, but I don't think this would pass a color contrast check. Let's take a look. I've made this into a graphics layer, so we'll have to work with it from within the graphics menu. To do that, come to your map and not your layout, because you can't manipulate graphics as well in the layout. We'll click on States Graphics. This will give us some options at the top of the ribbon bar, Graphics and Graphics Layer. For now, we want to choose Graphics so that we can use this Select tool right here. This is how we can select an element in the Graphics Layer. We'll click on this New York label and it will put this box around it, showing that it's selected. From here, you have some options with the font, but we want more options with the font. To get to these options, come to this format text symbol arrow underneath the text symbol box and click on it. This will open the element tab, which is the same tab you use to manipulate things like map frames and legends. Here we can see all of the properties that are set for a font. Most importantly, I want to understand what the text fill color is. So I'm going to click on it and then click color properties. We can see that the hex code for this is 999999 or a mid-level gray. Here's where it gets a little trickier. Because I'm not using a standard background color and I am instead using a hill shade, we can't really select what our background color is. If I had filled in the state layer to some color and not used the hill shade, we could select the color of that background and the color of the text and put it into our color contrast checker. For now, we're going to have to improvise a little bit. The best workaround I know of is to come over here and select Halo in this drop down menu. Selecting Halo will allow us to put this white halo around all of our text, such as I've done with these other city labels. We could do that with the New York label to make it stand out a little bit from the background, and we probably will. But for now, I want to use the halo to understand what the background color of our map is. I'll click this drop down, and then I will select Polygon Symbols and Format Polygon Symbols. This will allow us to manipulate the color of the halo. I'm going to click this drop down, and then I'm going to use the eyedropper. And I'm going to come here to one of the many colors underneath this hill shade and click it. This will allow me to see the color properties for the background color. Most importantly, we need this hex code, EAE9E2. I've copied that, and I will paste it into our color contrast checker. Then I will enter the hex value for our foreground color, or the color of the label. Here we can see that our contrast ratio is 2.34 to 1. That's not very good, and it definitely fails all of our checks. We could try another color in this map, since there are a lot of different background colors. But if the lightest color failed the check, I'm guessing the darker colors will also fail the check. Let's see what happens if we add white as the background color. Still not very good. We're closer, but we're failing our checks still. I think we need to make the gray a little bit darker. Currently, we're using a 40% gray, so let's see what happens if we try it with a 50% gray. That's a little better. We're passing the initial check for large text, which this might qualify as, but I think we're still going to need to do more. Using a 60% gray, we're passing most of the checks, but we still have to enable the background color as white in order to make it the most readable. To do that, come to your halo symbol, select color, and then scroll to a white. Now we have a New York State label that's still distinguishable from the city labels using visual hierarchy, but is also readable on this map. 
Let's take a look at another map where we look at background contrast in Legends. Here we have a frequent fire landscapes map where we have a few different colors in a legend on top of a blue background from water. I'm a little bit concerned about whether this grassland label patch stands out on the blue background. So I'm going to check the color contrast of that background and find out. In the symbology pane for that layer, we can select the color properties and get our foreground color. Then we can come back to the map and select this rectangle that I've put around the legend. The rectangle is set to exactly match the background color of the water. I'll select this and paste it in our web aim color contrast checker. Here we can see that there's a fail around this. If this was text, it would be almost unreadable. Because it's a legend, it's a little bit more forgiving, but I think there are still some things we would need to do in order to make this legend readable. Possibly, we could consider changing this rectangle to a white box. I don't like this because it stands out a lot more and draws a lot more attention to the legend. Because this is raster data, there's not a lot we can do. If it was polygon data, we could create a gray box around each of the legend patches, although that would also appear in our map. Likely, the only thing we can do here is change the background color of the water or change the color of the blue in the map. I'm not going to do that right now, but just know that these are important things you need to think about when creating a map. I really encourage you to take the time to play around with all of the tools mentioned here and Really use the label properties in ArcGIS Pro to see if you can make your maps as readable as possible for all audiences. Also, if you have experience or you know how to do these or just have some tips and tricks in other open source mapping platforms, please leave them in the comments below this video so that we can all learn how to do this in as many platforms as possible. This video is only scratching the surface of what you can and should do with labels and fonts and legends in universal design. I am by no means the authoritative expert on this, and there are many, many more resources. So I really encourage you to do some work, do a little research, and see what you can come up with to make your maps even better. This video series is only scratching the surface of what you can and should do with universal design and making your maps as usable as possible but we hope it has served as a useful resource to get you started on your universal design journey. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.